Hey guys, this is Jack and welcome to the very first FPV Academy How to Fly FPV video. Now in this video I'll be going over the basics of the split S maneuver along with some common errors and how you can fix them. We'll then go into the liftoff FPV simulator and see how we can practice the split S on there before we go out and try it in real life. So let's get right into it. Firstly, when it comes to the split S maneuver, it's important to wrap your head around what's actually happening to the quad. When doing a split S, you're basically rolling the quad but pausing halfway through the roll upside down. You then do half a backflip and pitch the quad up again so that it's level with the horizon. So to make it simple, it's half a roll into half a backflip. However, you don't do this super fast. You can do the roll fast, but the most difficult part of a split S maneuver is knowing how much to pitch the quad up and how much throttle to apply. With that said, let's look at the progression of the split S maneuver. For these exercises, you would need two racing gates and a big open field. I can definitely recommend the DYS racing gates I use in this video since they are great gates that can take a beating. Make sure you place these gates at least 100 feet apart from each other. To start off with, you want to fly really high so that you have some altitude on your side if you mess something up. You also want to overshoot the gate so that it gives you more than enough time to line up with the gate to fly through it. So for the first exercise, fly really high just like this, overshoot the gate a lot and then start with a split S maneuver. What I really like to do is do the initial roll really fast instead of slowly. If you do it slow, having the throttle open, it will pull you to the side you are rolling to and throw you off center a bit, which means you then have to correct your line again. By doing this fast and cutting the throttle quite a bit, it makes sure you don't go off center and keeps you in line with the gate, allowing you to only focus on making it under it. Now the next important part is knowing when to start applying throttle again and how much you need to pitch your quad. There's no right or wrong answer for this and you just have to go with what feels good for you. However, I can give you guys a few guidelines. What I really like to do is race at a 40 degree camera angle. Having the camera at 40 degrees allows me to always keep the subject I want to fly under dead center in my screen, whilst then only adjusting the throttle. By having the gate always in the middle of the screen, the only thing that leaves me to worry about is throttle control. I can then adjust the throttle enough so that it will fly perfectly under the gate. Once you are able to get the general gist of it, let's move over to making the split S maneuvers a bit more tight. The same concept above applies. Instead, you are now going to start gauging when exactly you need to initiate the roll closer to the gate instead of really high and very overshot. By not doing it so high, it brings in more risk by giving you less time to adjust any mistakes you make during the maneuver. You just have to find the height you feel comfortable with and then keep practicing to make it tighter and tighter. So to progress a bit more, you can start rolling earlier so that you're already upside down before you've passed the gate. This will also make it easier to keep the gate dead center of your screen. At this point where I'm upside down, I usually like to cut my throttle down a lot so that my quad doesn't fly to the ground when I'm adjusting my pitch. If you are overshooting the gate, just give one quick burst of throttle to stop the momentum from making it overshoot even more. Then, once you are dropping straight down, you can start pitching it up more and apply a constant gain in throttle to go through the gate. As a final note on the racing split S, a lot of times the track requires you to come from a low angle and go over the gate to do a split S. When this is the case, pitch your quad up quite a bit to lob it over the gate in a nice oval shape. Rather go a bit slower and higher than trying to rush it from an angle that is nearly impossible to do unless you are very experienced. Once you get the hang of it, just keep practicing this. Focus on initiating the split S closer to the gate and not overshooting it by a lot. You want to get to the point where it just becomes second nature and you don't even have to think about doing it anymore. Just practice and practice. Moving on, let's have a look at the freestyle split S. This is when you float over the trees and obstacles upside down doing a split S as in the video I uploaded on my channel a while ago. The freestyle split S is exactly the same as the racing split S. The only difference is that you intentionally cut the throttle to float over the objects and then start powering up again. I would definitely recommend that you have mastered the race split S before attempting it during freestyle. So what you want to do is start flying towards the obstacle from a lower angle and then punching the throttle to start flying up and over it. An important note is to make sure that you have more than enough momentum going that you'll fly over the object if you had to cut the throttle straight away. You would rather want to have too much momentum than not enough. Having too much momentum can always be corrected mid-flight. Now just before you're about to start flying over it, you want to initiate the split S maneuver and roll your quad upside down. Whilst upside down, it's one of the best feelings when flying FPV, just floating over the obstacle. If you feel that you're going too fast and you're sure that you're going to clear the obstacle by far, you can apply a tiny bit of throttle to break your momentum and bring you closer to the object. 
Once you've cleared it completely and you can feel the quad is starting to fall to the earth, you can start pitching it up to go under the obstacle. Easy as that. Or well, not so easy, but it gets easier over time. Just keep practicing and practicing and you'll feel how your general stick control improves as well. Now as always, let's see how we can practice this in the Liftoff FPV simulator before we go out and try this in real life. This track is available to download on the Steam Workshop for you to practice. If you can't find it, just search for FPV Academy in the Liftoff Steam Workshop section. Now exactly the same as I just explained, start flying really high and overshoot the gates. Then progress to the point where you get closer and closer to the gate and you can do at least 20 split S's without crashing into anything. Once you're able to do 20 of these confidently, you are ready to go out and try this in real life. Now, thank you guys a ton for watching this video. If you've learned anything, then don't forget to subscribe for weekly how to fly FPV videos. We also have a Slack group for all our patrons where we talk about these videos more in depth and also which how to video to cover next. Becoming a patron also allows you to send us one video a month to review and do a write up on pointing out what you can do if you're flying to improve as a pilot. If you want to learn more about this, then head over to the Patreon page via the link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video. This is Jack, signing off.